we could goodie. get access there, they would a thousand percent eat. Hey, it's going. Can we get two votes? Cast right into them. You got it. It's coming. You got it. <laughs> My name is Ranga Pereira. I'm a chef and angler living in the mountains of Montana. I grew up in Sri Lanka, where a passion for food was instilled in me at a young age. A heart attack at 36 gave me a whole new perspective on life. I abandoned the checklist and decided to just live. Now, I'm traveling, exploring new fisheries, foods, and friendships. This is Flavor on the Fly. On this adventure, we're in a place that's more concrete than jungle. It's a confluence of every major culture from around the world. One and a half million people condensed into 300 square miles. In the pursuit of great tastes, bent rods, and one-of-a-kind characters, this is Flavor on the Fly, New York City. First on our list of stops is Manhattan's iconic Central Park. While it's one of the few places where people can come to experience a taste of nature in the Big Apple, it's not a place I'd think to come fish. Rongo, what's up, man? Brandon. Good to meet you. Myth the man, the legend. Meet our guide for the day, Brandon Dale. For those who don't know Brandon, he's nothing short of a high-energy genius who spends his day working to fight cancer, welcoming the POC community to the outdoors, and working as a fishing guide in his free time, of which he has very little. So what are we what are we going for here? Carp. Yeah, name of the game. Carp in the park, NYC. Okay. Yeah, part of the city. So common carp, mirror carp. There are a couple long-tailed carp here as well. So like wow. koi. Okay. Um, yeah, so we can hopefully get into maybe more than one of them, which would be awesome. Man, I am so pumped to get out, get out in the city. I've I've actually I never imagined fishing out here. But what I'm most excited about, I've been fishing for 20 years. This is the first time that I've got a person of color guiding me. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, this is great, man. I'm pumped, man. I'm pumped. Uh, yeah, I just feel like it's going to be a different experience today, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man, I am, uh, I'm really pumped to have you with me, man. I think it's like a really cool thing to sort of be in an awesome city, in an awesome place, on a great fishery, but then also like in a really, really way, like, you know, sort of like pushing the culture along for fly fishing. And I think awesome. really making a place where everyone can see themselves. For someone who's used to fishing surrounded by nothing but the vast expanse of the American West, this experience felt as far from familiar as I could imagine. Surrounded by the concrete and curious observers, this felt more like a performance than a quiet day in the water. Him, you bit that, I thought I waited. Yep, yep, keep watching your, oh, yeah, oh, oh, he went for it, oh! oh. After countless failed attempts to hook one in front of what felt like the entire city, it seemed like it was finally time for my luck to turn around. Oh, he's on, baby, yes! <laughs> Yeah, so sign pressure him, uh, and yeah, just keep, let him run if you uh, Or so I thought. <laughs> we'll honestly just take a loop around. After coming up short at the fountain, we decided to take a stroll through the park and find some more cooperative fish. Those deck, the deck of people, that's what we're, that's what we're looking for right here. And they used to have these windows open, but the fish have moved, and it's like annoying because they're right in the corner. But if, look, you can see, oh, koi. There's an orange koi, actually. Yeah, dude, I can see that. Wow, yeah, if we could goodie. get access there, they would a thousand percent eat. We spotted some koi out in the distance, so we decided to rent one of those tourist boats. Hey, how's it going? Can we get two boats? I can't say for sure, but the way that the guys at the boat dock looked at us tells me that not a lot of people had tried this approach before. Look at that, look at that. You see the orange one? I think we picked that orange guy up. Nice, nice. Ooh, no, no, no. Yeah, you gotta wait for it to go down. <laughs> Ooh, you're on, you're on, you're on. Get him out of the weeds, get him out of the weeds. Get him out, get out, get him out of the weeds. I'll back you up. Keep pressure on him. Dude, that's a big ass fish. That's a big fish. And there it was. All of our efforts paying off in a spray of glory for all the park to see. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Baby! <That's awesome. laughs> You guys like that show? <laughs> <laughs> oh.
<laughs> Luckily, fun time wasn't quite over. It was time for Brandon to step up to the plate and take a crack at casting to some Central Park koi. Got it. It's coming. You got it. You! <laughs> Boy on, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh, baby. Now that's how you pick them out. Oh my god! <laughs> What? What? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> that was so cool. When you landed the koi, I was like, oh. With a successful session of the least conventional urban fly fishing imaginable under our belts, there was still some time in the day to refocus our energy into getting back to the basics. Just like that, we were headed out of the city in search of some wild trout. This is the Croton River East Branch. Okay. This is actually New York City's drinking water. Oh, wow. This is kind of like the place that people come for trout fishing in the city. Fish it out. And like at this point right here, yeah, so it starts getting rocky and shallow there. So like basically trying to get that up and a little closer to shore. Yep. Oh, yeah, money, 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 money. Money go. So that's the idea. So keep watching that as it goes through the foam line. Do is actually fish this. So you see this soft water right across from us? Fish on. Oh, hell yeah. He's on, baby. Brown trout in New York. Dude. My god, dude. Yeah, Like buddy. slot work. Oh, I see this one on the right hand side. Oh, yeah, yeah, there he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good, that's a good fish. Nice, dude. Oh, dude. Hell yeah. Thanks, sir. Oh, that take. You just frickin' nailed it. <laughs> nice dude. Oh, dude, that's a pretty one, man. That's sick. Woo, that's a pretty looker. With conditions being about as good as they could get, we fished through the very last drops of light. It's not every day you can have fishing experiences like this, and I was incredibly grateful to spend the day with Brandon. As we finally reeled in our lines in the dark, all I could think was that this will be, without a doubt, a day I will remember for the rest of my life. Thanks for showing me your water. Thanks for, a fun, you know, more than anything, thanks for a fun day. Fun and unique adventure today. After experiencing some fresh air north of the city, it was time to break back into Brooklyn and meet up with an absolute legend. Award-winning author, 35-year New York Times contributor, foodie, and someone I've looked up to for a very long time. That guy is none other than Peter Kaminsky. Hey, Ronga. In you come, buddy. Great good, to see you. Good to meet you. How are you? Yeah, it's great to meet a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was what I was thinking. <laughs> Who's the other rock star? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we're gonna go shopping. Yeah, yeah. Seafood? For sure, for sure. We have a. The local fish store I've been going to for years, they get yeah. fish and oysters from around here. Okay. And uh, it's called Fishtails, and they're great guys. I mean, New York was once the biggest oyster fishery in the world. Really? There was one oyster bed that went from Staten Island, 22 miles up river, to uh, uh, Haverstraw Bay. So, um, yeah, we got oysters. As we walked down the block en route to the local fish market, I couldn't help but think how surreal it was to be surrounded by skyscrapers when I'd just been knee deep in a wild trout stream not even 12 hours ago. Ranga, it's good to meet you. Thanks Pleasure. for having us. Oh, thanks for calling by. Big John, the postman, his famous rule is if you're not going to serve it to your mother, don't put it on the table. <laughs> I think that's a good rule yeah, in general for fair. anything. Yeah, you know, because you, you do it right, you go home, you're happy with fresh fish. Meet Nick, like I just did. A true New Yorker through and through. It's New York, it never stops. And a knowledgeable fishmonger at a place which seems to have grown a reputation for having some of the best seafood the city has to offer. It works for a lot of people, you know, because it's like they're so afraid to cook fish because they want to do too much. It's a strong, independent fish, it doesn't need all this good stuff. Now we're getting oysters. Yeah. Local oysters. Yeah. That now used to be the oyster capital of the world. We depleted it. Now the Billion Oyster Project, they're coming out and they're just pumping the ocean full of oysters. Well, I think we should buy some oysters. I'm, I'm, I want to try hungry. these oysters. Yeah. yeah, we should do that. Let's do this. Would you like me to shuck them for you? You want them just. Yeah, I want you to go shop.
We got our blue points. So these are your traditional East Coast oyster, right? Okay. But we also make sure before this goes in your bag, every single oyster, clam, mussel is still alive. You ever ride a motorcycle? Yep. Hey, you know that throttle? Yep. Nice and easy. That's the same motion. Okay. He even offered me a free sample. Cheers, guys. Salute. That is not a West Coast oyster. Good though, right? That is excellent. After Nick's mini masterclass on seafood, it was time to head back to Peter's, drop off the oysters, and head down to the dock. While Peter stayed back to prep some of the ingredients for tonight's dinner, we set our sights on yet another incredibly unique New York adventure, Bluefish in Jamaica Bay. Kurt. Kurt, good to meet you. Meet our guide, Kurt Schwartz. Kurt is a local seasoned vet when it comes to fishing these waters for game fish like stripers, bluefish, and anything else that'll eat a fly. And while this stormy weather would be far from his first rodeo, he made it a point to assure me that if we wanted to find some fish today, we were gonna need to work for them. It's gonna be tough. I mean, it, it's really windy. It's, we got a nor'easter in right now. Okay. And then coming up behind it is a uh, tropical depression. Okay. So you're getting kind of double whammy right now. If we find the fish, which is a big if, I mean, they don't generally react too well to be going around, uh, we'll get on them, you know, but okay. we'll see what we can find. It's, it's gonna be wet. Okay. With high hopes and low expectations, it was time to make a rainy run to JFK Airport. How far did you say it was to the airport? So the airport uh, is probably three miles from here. It's not, it's not bad. There's something so unpredictably New York about tossing a fly under a 747. Smell of jet fuel in the morning. All right, I see birds up ahead here. We're gonna drive over there. In this style of fishing, birds are a key indicator of bait. And where there's bait, there's usually fish. Well, that didn't work. So what's the strip action? So you're just trying to make it pop. In case it doesn't show, this is a fishery and style of fishing I have almost zero experience with. Standing on the bow of the center console was a lot different than my typical trout fishing back west. Mix that with the fact that we're fishing right next to one of the world's busiest airports, my hopes of catching a fish felt like they were dwindling away by the minute. You're gonna cast right near the plug. There's no hooks on it. And uh, they'll, be, they'll be bunched up on it pretty good and you'll, you'll have a better chance. They're just so up and down, I, I just want to give us a fighting chance here. After a few close calls, it was time to mix things up and tease these blues to the boat. Hit me, hit me, hit me. You're on, you're on, you're on. Excellent, good job. Jesus. Come to the back, come to the back. He's getting under the boat. Damn, that is a mean ass fish, dude. Woo! Blue fish in. Awesome, man. Wow. Finally, we had a fish on the board. Dinner is served. Blue fish in. That's dinner. That was exciting. That was, that was fun. Here you go. That was super fun. With some blue fish in the cooler and a refreshing sense of accomplishment on the mind, we went back to Peter's, lit some logs in the brio, and got ready to fire on dinner. So let's fillet up this fish first. First and foremost, I'd never had bluefish before. So it took me a little bit of time to understand the flavor profile. And when Peter and I were brainstorming, he was the one that said, you know, this is an oilier fish. It's got a little bit of a heavier flavor. And he said, buttermilk is just a really great combination with bluefish. And so taking his lead, we decided that we we're gonna make a buttermilk based green goddess sauce which is a ton of herbs and chives and lemon, and it was an amazing combo. You have to make it, not That's for great. the most spice-hating person in the group, but the second most. <laughs> you know, that first one you can just write off. <laughs> in Sri Lankan food, we use a lot of onion and onion relishes to complement our seafood dishes. So we marinated the onions and we threw a little bit of dill on top and salivating thinking about it. After having Nick serve me up the sample of fishtails, it was a nice, briny oyster. But I also wanted a touch of sweetness, and one of the things that I brought along with me was a year and a half old batch of local raw honey that I had fermented. And I've done variations of, you know, whiskey butter on oysters before, it just works. And it was a beautiful combination. 
Oh, good lord, right? So you're saying we just put it right on and once they open, top it off with the butter? Well, that's an idea. Okay. A little bit more of a rustic method. They do this a lot in the South where they take the whole oyster and then you put it over the coals. And what happens is as the oyster cooks, the top starts to slowly open. You don't need an oyster shucker or anything like that. So is that good or do I need to let it open just a little bit more? I didn't see. And then you just basically pop the top once it's cool enough and you just scoop the oyster right out, or sometimes you can add other ingredients or whatever it is that you want. We're cooking the oysters over, again, hard wood. It's just got this beautiful cooked over coals flavor. I would just put the butter right on there. And so it would literally poach in the butter with the oyster liquid. Oh. Okay. This is ready. All right, go for it, man. Whichever one is not too hot to handle. Whoa. You want to hang for a second? Don't burn yourself. Woo, don't burn yourself. <laughs> Three pointer. What do you think? Great. Awesome. Wow. That's going to do it? I'll do it. Okay. Wow. It's a combo where it just, it slows you down because there's so much going on because initially you get the sweetness, then you get the creaminess of the butter, and then the oyster really kicks in and the finish is that brininess, and then the very last thing to come in is that sequence of sweet acid. A bite should take you on a journey, and in that single bite, it was a lovely little journey. We decided that the best way to treat the fish was to cook it over a searing, searing hot outdoor fire over oak wood. So just cook it really fast, get that skin on the bottom nice and crispy, and really have the sauce do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the flavors. And it was just a beautiful combination, just worked incredibly well. Flaky fish, creamy dressing, and a nice snappy, crunchy pickle onion kick right at the end. And it was just a beautiful compliment. You can get maybe a better French meal in Paris and a better Italian meal in, you know, in Rome. But New York has so many communities that sort of reach critical mass. There's enough Sri Lankans, there's enough Mexicans, there's enough French that that community can continue its food tradition. It's not like being the only takeout wheat place, wheat place <laughs> you know, in a small town in Oklahoma. And uh, I think chefs feed off of that in a global food scene that we live in now, New Yorkers are particularly blessed. That works. And you also need experience with a fork, which obviously I don't have. <laughs> Fingers are okay. Yeah, it's great. <clears throat> That dressing is fantastic. Yeah. You know, we're working with the ingredients. The oysters are from here. The bluefish was is from here. The most of the ingredients that we use today were from here. And the idea of being able to harvest and gather no matter where you are, no matter how urban, suburban, or rural you are, I think that if we really care about food, you're gonna use the local stuff that's gonna be the best tasting and the freshest. And it was a treat to be in New York and do it the way that New Yorkers do it. So thank you. I love this town. New York is truly a mecca of opportunity. If there was one word I could use to describe this city, I'd go with abundance. Around every corner, there's a new unexpected adventure to be had, each one entirely unique to this city. From the freshest seafood to fly fishing underneath roaring 747s, no matter what your thing is, there's a good chance it could be found here. New York, it's been one hell of a ride.